All right, and welcome back, guys. This is going to be the guide on how to get SMGs diamond in Black Ops Cold War at a world record pace. Now, I did already record this video once, but it was about 30 minutes when I was done with it, and I thought that was way too long. So I'm cutting out quite a few things, and we're going to kind of sum up quite a few things that I didn't in that other video and just make things a little bit quicker because 30 minutes was way too long for this. <clears throat> now starting off before we get into this, in the description I'm gonna have both of these linked. I've already got a guide for general tips and tricks for this camo grind and multiplayer in general. And this guide pretty much encompasses stuff that affects every class, not just the SMGs. This video is going to be focusing on just the SMGs and I'm gonna be leaving out general tips and tricks from this video to shorten it in time. Uh, because I've already made a video on general tips and tricks. I would recommend watching the general tips and tricks before watching this video. Also, if you want to get Dark Aether, I have a guide for getting Dark Aether at a world record pace, and that video includes everything, and that is a full, thorough guide on everything you need to know to get Dark Aether quickly. So what we're going to be doing is breaking it down for every stage of the weapon, what you should be doing. Now, starting off, it's going to be level zero. You're not going to have any camo challenges unlocked. You're essentially just going to be leveling the weapon. And even when you do get a camo challenge, the very first camo challenge is get 300 eliminations with that SMG, which that is very easy. You don't have to do anything specific for that. That is just getting kills. Now, while you are in this current stage, your main goal is to be leveling up the weapon. Your main goal is just to be getting kills and whatnot. And there's a few different ways to go about that. Some people recommend Dirty Bomb. Uh, I've never really found Dirty Bomb to be that great for leveling. SMGs are really good on smaller maps, so if Nuketown 24-7 is an option, obviously that is a great way to go to start off with leveling these off. If not, Crossroads is a great option. If there's a playlist with Crossroads, uh, that's a good option. Right now, there is a playlist for Crossroads and Moscow. Obviously, Moscow is not that great for SMGs, but Crossroads is probably going to be your best bet. So playing this game mode, lobby surfing to get uh, Crossroads would be a good option. If not, just play a game mode you're comfortable with. Uh, while we were doing this grind, there wasn't any special playlist. We played Hardcore Dom for just about all of it. So when you first just start off working on the SMGs, the best thing to do is go on the special playlist if there's any, or just Hardcore Dom, or wherever you're going to be leveling up your weapon the absolute quickest. Now the second set of camo challenges you unlock for the SMG are headshots. Now with this being the second category you unlock, more than likely you will get all 75 of these while you're working on doing all of the other challenges still needed for the SMG. So we didn't really have to ever go for these, but if you find yourself struggling with headshots and you're getting towards the end of the gun and you haven't finished your headshots, some general tips on this. So for this, I'm just gonna breeze through it, go over some general tips and move on. So with this, obviously, if you see an AFK guy, clearly you wanna go for that headshot. There's no risk in not doing it. Same thing, if you know people camping up on a head glitch that you can sneak around and get those free easy headshots, just getting a few of those here and there, but more than likely, this should auto be done for you by the time you're done with the weapon because you've got to get quite a few kills with this weapon just to get it max rank and so on. Now the third set of challenges is get five kills without dying 20 times with all weapons coming from the SMG you're currently working on. Now, like I said, for the headshots, you get this challenge fairly early on. So this should be something that you complete without really going for it. Uh, and I'm gonna give a few just very basic tips. If you find yourself struggling with this, obviously, once you unlock this challenge, every time you find yourself on a three kill streak, a four kill streak, just start playing it slow. So once you find yourself on a three kill streak, at that point in time, just kind of stay back, play slow, try to get those easy pickoff kills. That way you can get the five kills without dying. And for most people, you should have all of this done by the time you finish the rest of the challenges because it is the third thing you unlock. But like I said, if you're having trouble, just start playing a little bit more slow when you realize like, oh, hey, I'm getting close to getting that bloodthirsty. And just keep that in mind while you're grinding the rest of the challenges needed for this weapon. Now, the fourth set of weapon challenges you get are the long shots. Now with this, I'm gonna go a little bit more in detail because there's a few things you can do to dramatically increase the amount you're getting per game for this. Now, my biggest thing I could recommend for getting long shots is play hardcore. Even if you're a core player and that's all you play is core, especially with SMGs at long range, it's going to take quite a few shots with an SMG to kill someone in uh, core and you're gonna find yourself shooting at someone and they're gonna go behind cover and you're gonna lose that kill. Whereas in hardcore, it's gonna take one to three bullets to kill someone at range with an SMG and people aren't really going to have time to take cover or anything like that uh, in hardcore. So you're definitely going to find yourself getting quite a few more of these in that mode. Now for the attachments I'd run while doing this, I just have a few really quick suggestions. You probably want to throw on a two time scope. This scope's really good at pretty much all ranges, and this is going to help you get those long shots a little bit better. And then especially while playing hardcore, I'd put on the barrel that gives you that extra 100% bullet velocity. This is going to make it so when you're shooting at people at long range and hardcore, the bullets are going to be getting there quicker so you have a better chance of killing them before they either shoot back at you or they take cover. 
Now the rest of the attachments can help you a little bit depending on your preferred play style, but those are the two attachments I'm going to recommend you definitely be running if you are going for this. Now I'd 100% recommend you definitely use those two attachments, but other than that, there's a few attachments that might help you a little bit, maybe an attachment that helps you ADS a little bit quicker and some stuff like that. But honestly, the two attachments I showed were really the two big ones you want to make sure you're using while going for these long shots. Now on top of that, there are going to be a few maps that you want to be playing while going for long shots. There are some maps that there are really good long shot spots, and I guess we're just going to go over real quick the different maps and the different areas you should kind of be peeking and using to be able to get these long shots. Now the first one is Amada, the uh, 6v6 version of this map. If you get in this captain's quarter up here, especially in hardcore, there's spawn points all back here, and you can really easily from this area just kind of hop around, go to different zones, get long shots regardless of what spawn they're in just kind of by controlling this area playing a little campy and just killing them as they spawn in on both sides now the next map we're going to talk about is checkmate this map is honestly in my opinion probably the best map for all challenges in this game uh, it's really good for point blanks it's extremely good for kills behind cover and it's also really good at long shots essentially with how open this map is especially with smgs just about any kill you get on either the left or the right side any of these anyone camping in any of these spots right here all of these will be long shots and just with how open this map is essentially regardless of where you are you should be able to find someone somewhere else on the map that you're able to get a long shot on with these smgs now, once again, Garrison is another great map for long shots. Just like Armada, you kind of want to get in the middle of the map and hold down this power position. From here, you can see kind of both areas that people are spawning at. So regardless of which side the enemies are spawning at, you have tons of opportunity for quite a few easy long shot kills on both sides. Now, the last and final map we're going to be showing is Satellite. This one's a little bit harder for SMGs because I think ARs, especially in these dunes, have uh, kind of the advantage on you. But depending on the lobby you're in, you should honestly be able to get quite a few SMG long shots on this map as well. Out of all the maps I've showed, I think this one might be the hardest specifically if you're using an SMG. But you can still definitely get quite a few uh, long shots on this map without too much effort. Now, obviously, you can get long shots on any map, not just the maps we showed. But the maps that I kind of showed here and showcased the different spots, these, in my opinions, were kind of the best areas to kind of focus in and get these long shots. Obviously, on Dirty Bomb, you have tons of options for long shots there but once again that's not hardcore and it's going to be taking quite a few shots to kill someone at range so that was really just a quick rundown of the ways we went about getting the long shot medals like i said tons of different ways you could do it but that specifically was kind of our strategy and what specifically worked best for us now the fifth set of challenges you get are where things get a little bit more annoying this challenge really isn't hard but it's more annoying than all of the previous ones in my opinion now this challenge reads, kill 75 enemies detected, stunned, or blinded by your score streaks, equipment, or field upgrades. Now what I see a lot of people doing for this is running around with stuns, continuously stunning people and killing them. Yes, that counts and that works, but to me that is such a slow way to go about it. And I think the way we did it would probably save you a little bit time if you uh, do the method I'm about to show you. Now while doing this, sometimes we'd run stuns because yeah, if you see a guy not moving or if you sneak up behind a guy, you can get a nice easy free stun kill. But that was really the only time we were going out of our way to stun people. We weren't running around throwing a bunch of stuns, killing people because the UAV method for this is way quicker in my opinion. Essentially what we do is we just wait till we get a UAV, call in the UAV and try to get as many kills as possible while the UAV is up. We'd also run the field mic because once again, enemies in range of the field mic also count for this challenge. And that was really the two main things we did. We'd place the field mic, like let's say if you're playing hard point or whatever you're playing, you want to place the field mic kind of around the objective because that's where people funnel in and you can get a lot of easy kills around that. But now doing the method that I just talked about, only getting kills while your UAV up and only getting kills around the field mic, you'll probably find yourself missing about 20 or 30 UAV kills left once you finished all of the other challenges. Now what we found was the most efficient way to go about this was, let's say your very first weapon you were working on was the mp5 essentially we would work on the mp5 and we would get everything done with the mp5 so everything else would be done for the mp5 except for the flora challenges for the flora challenges we'd still be missing about 20 to 25 more kills with uavs now what we would do at this point in time is we would start working on the next smg we'd start working on the milano and we would start leveling this up and as you know for the first four challenge sets you don't need any kills while a uav is up so while we are working with the milano Every single time we got a UAV, we would switch to a separate class we had with the MP5 or whatever that previous weapon was, 
and we would wait to use that class, call in the UAVs, and finish up getting the kills with UAVs that way. And swapping off weapons like that and just waiting till you get a UAV or field mic to then go back and use the weapon, I think could save you a lot of time. Because the first few weapons we did, we were just running around stunning people, and trust me, it took a lot longer just going specifically for those stun kills than it did just getting UAV, waiting, and swapping back to the weapon. I think you would definitely cut off many, many hours of playtime by doing that method. Now, once you get to the sixth set of challenges for the SMG, this is what a lot of people would consider to be one of the more hard challenges while grinding for diamond SMGs. Essentially, you've got to get 75 point blank range kills. And as it states, essentially, you've just got to almost be touching the enemy while you kill them and it will count for this. And to me, this was probably the easiest challenges for all of the SMGs. Uh, once you kind of get a method down for getting the point blank range kills, this only takes about two or three games and then you can kind of move on to the next one. I know a lot of people struggle with this, but I think if you play the right modes with the right attachments, I think the average player can get this done in about two, three games, maybe four if they're in uh, some higher skill-based matchmaking lobbies. But uh, to me, out of the SMGs, this should be the challenge that you kind of blow through, get done really quick to move on to the other ones. So now I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna kind of go through everything you need to know to pretty much get these point blank range kills done in about two games. The first thing we're gonna start off with are the attachments. This is probably one of the more important things because obviously you need to be able to run up, get close to the enemy, and you need to be able to efficiently kill them at close range. Now for this, I'm not gonna run an optic because more than likely for all of these, you're going to be hit firing. If you're in point blank range from someone, you do not need to be ADSing. You just need to be able to take them down really quickly, hit firing. Now starting off, I'm gonna go over the stock attachment you wanna be rocking for the SMG. You wanna be rocking the stock that does plus 10% sprint to fire time. This is going to allow you to shoot quicker after sprinting up close to someone. I know the Raider stock does plus 30 instead of plus 10, but that also takes away 30% hip fire accuracy. And like I said, we're gonna be hip firing a lot and we really don't wanna deal with that negative 30%. Now, when it comes to the magazine attachment, I would just run the very last one. Usually while playing multiplayer, you don't wanna run this attachment because it takes a large chunk of your ADS speed. But like I said, we're specifically going for point blank range kills. We don't really need that. And it's gonna give you a bunch of bonuses to your magazine capacity, reload speed, and all of that good stuff. Now, when it comes to the underbarrel, you're gonna wanna run the grip that gives you that plus 3% movement speed. It also gives you some other benefits, but what you really want is that movement speed. You're gonna be able to get right up close and personal to that enemy a little bit quicker. Now, for the body attachment, you're going to want to run the one that does the plus 36% hit fire accuracy. Like I've said, you're gonna be hit firing a lot. Any bonus you can get for that is good. Now, after you have those four attachments on, there's not really any that really help us out too much. After that, I would just always run the plus 90% muzzle of lash concealment because you don't really need anything else. You don't need a sight because you're going to be hip firing. You don't need to be able to ADS any quicker or anything like that, especially even with stuff with recoil. You're going to be hip firing, so none of that really matters. So I would just always throw this on. I'm not sure how much it helps, but this is what I used for my fifth and final attachment slot for the SMGs. And then for the perk you want to use for this, you want to be using Perk Greed. This is going to allow you to have six perks, which some of these are going to be really helpful for doing this challenge. Now, the most important out of all of the challenges are the Perk 3 slot. I would always run Ninja because, like I said, during this, you're going to be sneaking up on enemies. And you do not want them hearing your footsteps because you're going to be right behind enemies a lot of the time. So Ninja, to me, is an absolute must. And then depending on your play style, I can make an argument for either Ghost or Gung Ho. I personally ran Gung Ho because this is going to allow you to fire while you're sprinting. So you're gonna be able to just run up there and immediately start shooting at the enemy. And you're not gonna have to worry about him trying to run away and then sprinting and then stopping and shooting him again with Gung Ho. You can just immediately continuously do that. Now, Ghost is also a viable option for doing this. And it might even be a good idea to run Lawbreaker and run all three perks, Gung Ho, Ghost, and Ninja. But uh, I'd rather have those extra four perks instead of uh, just having the option to have ghosts because enemies being able to see you from spy planes is kind of a big deal. But uh, I, I'd rather just have those extra four perks a lot of the time and Gung Ho and Ninja just kind of outbeat ghosts for me while going for this. Now for perk two, none of these were super useful for me, but I like the tracker. Tracker in this game isn't super good, to be honest. In uh, previous COD games, it was really good for anything point blank range because you could kind of follow enemies but I very, very seldomly find myself seeing enemies' footsteps in this. So I ran Tracker because it, it helped me a little bit and it's better than what the other um, perks in this slot can do. Uh, Assassin, once again, it's not gonna be super helpful, but it is a little bit easier to see people on the mini-map when you have Assassin. 
Perk one's actually fairly helpful for me. Uh, Ford Intel, the bigger mini map, you're gonna be flanking a lot. So being able to see a little bit more of what's going on is very, very helpful. And with this, you can also see where enemies are spawning in at, which is very helpful for flanking because you know where they're spawning in at and you can see a wider area. So you know where they're currently at as well. So it just helps you flank a little bit better with this perk. And on top of that, I ran Tactical Mask because one of the strategies that I use a little bit to help me get some more point blanks is throwing stun grenades and you don't want to be stunning yourself. So having on Tactical Mask is uh, pretty big for me because I throw a lot of close range stuns. Now for your field upgrade, you want to be using the field mic just because you're probably still working on floral. And then for tactical, like I just said, I would run the stun grenade. So that is really kind of the setup you want to be using for this. Those are the attachments and perks that I use to really maximize the amount of point blanks you can get in one game. Now, the other important thing is the map you are playing. Now, a lot of people are probably going to be like, Nuketown's one of your best bets. And for me, I've tried getting some point blanks on Nuketown. We actually completely finished getting DM Ultra quite a bit before Nuketown was added. Uh, Nuketown to me is okay for point blank range kills. Just the way Nuketown's laid out, uh, especially with the three lanes, I feel like a lot of times you see someone, they're at a pretty long engagement range, even though it is a smaller map just because of the way it's set up. Uh, but Nuketown's still a good option. I just don't think it's the best. Now, when it comes down to the top three maps to get these point blank ranges on, Crossroads is pretty good. Garrison is great with all of the flank rounds. Flanking around the vent on the left side or even just flanking around the right side, you can get in the enemy spawn pretty hidden. And once you're in there, you can sneak up behind them and get a lot of point blank ranges. But to me, hands down, the single best map for this is Checkmate. Even with how open checkmate is, with how easy it is to flank, especially in the plane, or going like really hard on the left side or really hard on the right side, you can really easily get into the enemy spawn. And to me, this is where I found the absolute best time to get these point blank ranges with. And like I said, towards the end of this grind, we were averaging between 30 and 40 point blank ranges a game on checkmate. Once we kind of got everything down and situated and we we're using the strat, which if you're getting 30 or 40 a game, it takes about two to three games to get this challenge completely wiped out. Now, on top of that, it's not all about the map you're playing. Modes are also very important. And to me, the single most important mode you can be playing is hardpoint. Hardpoint is the clear winner for this just because there is one central objective that everyone is going to be funneling around with. With Dom, you have three objectives, so people are more spread out, but hardpoint, everyone is focused on going on one single objective. Now, obviously there's more to this than just flanking around with the enemy. Uh, like I was saying before, we use stuns, especially if you see an enemy that potentially already sees you, throwing a stun at them to maybe disorient them might help you get that uh, point blank range kill on him. We didn't use stuns a ton to do this, but uh, there were some scenarios where using the stun could help you get a point blank range kill that you might not have been able to get without it. Now, another tip that we use, which is very helpful, and it might not be able to help everyone depending on uh, your setup and what you have, being able to turn up your in-game volume and kind of just listen for enemies helped a ton. Like if you're in a building and you hear an enemy about to enter or just hiding behind a door or being able to just kind of camp that door, wait for them to enter and get that easy, free point blank range kill uh, really helps. We got a ton that way, just kind of listening out. Like it's, it's the only time during the grind we heavily relied on sound. Because if you're relying on your sound, you know where the enemy's at. You can kind of force that close range engagement, which you might not otherwise have been able to do. So that is really the main thing you need to be doing if you want to get these point blank range kills out of the way as quick as possible. Hard points a must. Uh, I'd really recommend checkmate. Like I said, checkmate is just a beautiful map for challenges. If not, garrison also works and crossroads is also okay. But I'd really, if you have the option to, uh, do checkmate is perfect for this. And like I was saying about the floral attachments, if you just keep getting bad maps for point blank range kills, go start working on that next SMG and then as soon as you see Crossroads or as soon as you see Garrison, switch back to your class you're working on those point blanks with and just get those done in just a couple of games. Now, after the point blank range kills, this is the last set of challenges. This is the kill two or more enemies rapidly 25 times in multiplayer. Now, this to me, I would consider this just like the first three challenges we did for the weapon. These are really easy and pretty self-explanatory. And I feel like most people aren't gonna have much of a hard time with this. Just a few general tips I could give you uh, small maps are great for rapid kills because enemies are more than likely going to be bunched up together. Uh, once again, uh, objective game modes are really good for this because enemies are going to be clumped around the objective. Now, I wouldn't really recommend hardpoint for this 
because I think the uh, the rapid kills are easier to get in hardcore and hardpoint isn't in hardcore. But I mean, if you're playing hardcore Dom on a map like Crossroads or I mean, one of the smaller maps, you should be able to wipe this out in just a couple of games. And the main reason for that being is in hardcore, it only takes like two or three bolts to kill an enemy. So you can quickly kill an enemy, move on to the next one and get that really easy rapid kill. And uh, a map like Crossroads, you could probably drop like 10 to 15 double kills a game. Even in some of the more sweaty lobbies, you should still be able to chunk away at these rapid kills pretty quickly. And uh, with that, boys, I'm going to go ahead and end this. These were the tips and tricks we used to unlock this camo as quick as what we did. Like I said, some of these challenges I've breezed over a little bit because I didn't want to go too much into detail with stuff that was pretty basic. I really try to spend the majority of the time of this video kind of breaking down the more harder challenges that a lot of people seem to be struggling with. I'm also going to be working on a breakdown for every single other weapon category in multiplayer. On top of that, like I said, the general tips and trick guide is already out and I'd recommend watching that before you go into this video because I didn't cover the tips that I already said in that specific video because the point of that video was to be a general video to watch before this one so you knew all of the basic stuff that just helped every single class not just the specifics and then i've got a full intensive tutorial for the entirety of the dark aether grind explaining from start to finish what you should really be doing for dark aether as well both of those links will be in the description and on top of that, if you guys have any tips and tricks that I missed out on that helped you get SMGs, definitely make sure to leave that in the description to help anyone else that's kind of struggling with those same issues. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for sticking all the way to the end of this video. I have no idea how long this is going to end up being. Right now, my recording time says 50 minutes, so uh, we'll have to see how, uh, how much I can edit this down. But uh, yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.